Hey now. Today I am going to try to make some eggnog sourdough. Uh, I'm going to do a little bit of an experiment here between the two. Um, while the flour is going to be the same, and what I'm using here is 75% uh, um, white baker's flour and 25% whole wheat flour. Um, for the actual liquid, in one of them it's just going to be, un, um, uh, sorry, filtered water, of course, and then the other one is 50-50 eggnog, store-bought eggnog and water. Um, the other thing that's going to differ between the two of them here is that in the non-eggnog uh, liquid one, I'm going to add uh, some vanilla extract, and in that one it's uh, three and a half grams, which is 0.7%. Um, based on baker's uh, percentages, but then in both of them, I'm also going to um, bump up the uh, spicing. So I've got uh, in each of them, it's one gram or 0.2 percent of cinnamon, um, and two grams or 0.4 percent of nutmeg. And each of these is just going to make one loaf. I'm starting off with 500 grams flour in each. So I'm just going to add my flour and my spices, everything right off the bat here. I'm going to get both of these mixed up, and then we'll take a look at the two of them once the uh, it was ready here for the auto lease. All right, so I mixed these up here and um, just taking a, a smell of them, I'm not noticing the spices as much as I was wanting. So what I'm going to do is actually just double them. So it'll be 0.4% uh, of the cinnamon, 0.8% of the nutmeg and 1.4% of uh, the vanilla in the non eggnog one. Um, the cinnamon and the nutmeg of course are 048 percent in the uh, eggnog based one and then actually this one is just for some reason is quite a bit firmer and it wasn't nearly as sticky as the uh, straight up water one which I found a little surprising so I'm going to actually add five percent uh, more hydration so that's only 25 grams so just a little bit just to see what that does so I'm just going to add these in mix them all up again here and we'll take a peek at that once they're all combined all right, so post second mix, uh, we've got some here. I'm definitely noticing the spices a little bit more, which is awesome. Um, and it's funny because the texture really changed with the uh, eggnog um, liquid sourdough here. It definitely got quite a bit stickier, but also firmer at the same time, which is super crazy. Anyway, I'm going to let these sit for a couple hours just until my leaven is ready, and then we will mix that in. Okay, so my leaven is super ready here. Uh, I've only had an hour auto lease on my dough, but that's going to be just fine. So I'm just going to pop these on here. Um, I'm going to add in 125 grams of starter for each of them and mix them all up. And you can check it out uh, once that's done. We'll see what they look like. Uh, if you want to see um, my video on how I like to make my leaven, it's also on the channel here. Uh, feel free to check that out. But we'll come back once this is all nicely mixed up. All right, so after a few minutes mixing on each of them, I fully incorporated the leaven. Um, this is just the uh, non-eggnog liquid sourdough, and then this one here is that eggnog one, which I found, um, this one was definitely more of a pain in the butt to work with. I found that the, uh, the leaven didn't want to incorporate as easily, and it was a lot of kind of slopping around for just a little bit, but it did, uh, it did eventually mix in nicely. So I'm going to let this sit for half an hour now, and then we'll be mixing in the salt. So after 30 minutes, it's time to add our salt. This is just fine sea salt. Uh, it's 1.8%, so in each of these half uh, kilogram loaves, it's uh, nine grams. So I'm just gonna sprinkle these in, and then uh, just kind of wetting my fingers with some of this filtered water, I'll uh, mix them in, probably take uh, three minutes or so just to make sure it's fully incorporated. Okay, gave that a nice solid mixing, got all that salt in there. I'm going to cover these up and let them sit for another half hour, and then it's time for the first stretch and fold. Okay, so the first stretch and fold here is just the eggnog spice dough. So I'm just going to do four little stretches around. Yeah. And I'm just going to do that. Perfect. And now, quickly. We moisten, and this is the one with the eggnog in it. A little bit firmer feeling dough. It feels so weird. Cannot wait to see what this looks like when it's all done. And try and get one more stretch out of it here. <laughs> Pretty weak stretch. Do that. All right. Okay. I'll give them uh, probably at least one more stretch and fold. So I'll wait half an hour and then do that. All right, so after a second uh, stretch and fold, I'm now going to do the first coil fold. I'm going to pick it up, let it kind of tuck underneath and on both sides and rotate 90 degrees and repeat and do with the other side here as well. 
kind of tuck it underneath here just a little bit. This, uh, the actual eggnog one here is still reasonably stiff. So there we go. Um, I think I'm going to probably give these three sets, uh, probably three more sets of coil folds and we'll check on it after that. Okay, so um, after those folds, I gave it another hour here. So we've had four coil folds in total and uh, an hour rest after that. The uh, eggnog spice loaf is looking really ready. The uh, one with the actual eggnog in it is, you know what, it's not, I don't think it's quite as ready. It's certainly not as inflated as the other one. So I'm going to leave this for probably another half hour. In the meantime though, I will quickly deal with this one here. So it's going to lay out a little bit of flour and that's where it's going to rest. And just flour up my hands. I'm gonna bring her out here gently for a little pre-shaping. I'm just going to get her all nicely shaped and then I'm going to uh, set it over on that flour, cover it up, and let it sit for probably 10 minutes or so, and then do a final shaping. So this one will get into the fridge um, before I even kind of wrap up with the other one there. So just plop it right there, cover it up, we'll check on her in 10. All right, so after just a short 10 minute bench rest, I'm going to do a final, just a gentle final shaping on this bread. Flour here, and I've got my uh, banneton here. I've already layered it lightly with some rice flour, and I'm just going to now sprinkle a little extra rice flour on top of this here, flip her upside down. Then I will just cover this once more, get in the fridge for the overnight proof. Um, and in probably uh, 20 minutes, I'll check on the uh, eggnog sourdough, and hopefully that's ready for the bench rest. Okay, so I gave this an, an additional half an hour, and it's considerably more jiggly, and it's risen a little bit more, so I'm going to be happy with that. So it's just like I did with the other one. I'm just uh, laying a little bit of flour down that it's going to sit on. I'm going to flour my hands and gently tuck this out. It's going to be time here for a quick pre-shape. Just trying to be nice and gentle, and once this is all nice and tight here, I'm going to get it onto that flour, and oh, you can smell a lot of eggnog. <laughs> get it on this flour and let it sit for probably 10 minutes. We'll take another look at it here. All right, so after 10 minutes, I'm just going to pop this over here. I'll do a little final shaping on this. Just tighten it up a little bit more. Um, again, this Benetton, I've got the rice flour in there and I'm going to get a little bit more rice flour just onto this uh, loaf before I pop it in there all just in the hopes of it coming out uh, issue free in the morning when I go to bake this rice flour nice pop it in and I'm going to cover and refrigerate overnight see you in the morning Okay, so it's the next morning here and I am ready to bake. I've got the oven preheated at 500 degrees. I've got my eggnog spice bread here and then the eggnog sourdough seems to have um, kind of puffed up quite a bit more than the other one overnight, which I find interesting. Um, so I'm just going to cover with parchment, give a flip. Uh, just a touch more rice flour on that. Just a really simple scoring pattern across this and then fire it onto the combo cooker here. That one on the left, and then I will get this other one going here too. Once I have these in here, I'm going to cover them up at the bottom side, um, reduce the temperature to 450 degrees, give them 35 minutes like that for the oven spring, and then um, we'll take a look at them. All right, after 35 minutes, see how these things have fared. Ooh, definitely smells like the spices in here. That's awesome. All right, yeah, some really nice oven spring, especially off of that uh, the eggnog one. Awesome. Okay, I'm just going to close this up, drop her to 440, and uh, check on it in probably 25 minutes. All right, after 25 minutes, these are looking nicely browned. I'm going to pull them out, and oh yeah, beautiful. We will let these guys cool down for a couple of hours and then we will slice in and check them out. So, 
had at least a couple of hours for these to cool down and just kind of firm up. So I'm going to cut into the eggnog spice sourdough here. Pull that apart. Ooh, very nice. Ooh, yeah, smells good. Getting all of the, uh, the nutmeg, the cinnamon, uh, let's say probably a little hints of vanilla there too, not super strong, but definitely there. Yeah, just a little bit. Okay, so with this bread, I'm definitely getting the, uh, again, the cinnamon and the nutmeg. Vanilla is just a, a very minor player there. Um, I think the cinnamon and the nutmeg could be increased as well as the uh, vanilla for sure. I'd also be really tempted to throw in a bit of sweetness, uh, maybe some honey or some dark sugar or something like that, just to increase that. The bread itself is, uh, the texture and the, the moisture and whatnot is, uh, is beautiful. I like that, but just not quite what I was looking for in an eggnog uh, spiced bread. I mean, the nice thing about that, it'll still be fairly versatile. It'll make nice toast and what have you, but uh, I wouldn't tout it so much as, uh, hey, there's eggnog. Okay, now here is the uh, one that actually had eggnog in it as well. Beautiful. It rose a little bit better, which kind of surprised me because it seemed to be quite a bit firmer, the dough. I wasn't sure how it was going to rise, but it turned out to be nice. Let's do a little slice here of this one, and I'm hoping that those flavors are punched up in here. So... Smelling it, it smells a little bit stronger. I think of those egg uh, with the eggnog um, character. This one again is just a little bit more subtle um, than I would like. Um, the the bread itself though feels um, softer, a little bit chewier, and a touch more moist. Really, really soft bread. Uh, I like the texture more than the other one. Um, I think this is a good starting point for an eggnog uh, sourdough. However, next time I think I would go heavier with the eggnog, um, a little heavier with the spices, and possibly even some rum extract. So uh, I'm going to play around with that, and we'll try that again. Um, anyway, till next time, keep it at 11.